James Varick was born in 1705. He was the founder and first bishop of the Amy Zion Church. Varick was born to a slave mother somewhere around Newburgh, New York. His father, Richard Varick, was a free black man from Hackensack, New Jersey. Varick grew up in New York City where it is believed that he went to the free school for Negroes. After his schooling, he trained to become a shoemaker. In 1766, Varick began to attend the John Street Methodist Episcopal Church, a predominantly white congregation. While there, he became a minister, and John Street licensed him. Tensions arose when Varick was allowed to preach from the pulpit. The white congregation said that they demanded that the congregation be segregated. So they moved the blacks to the very back rows and some of them into the gallery. This really incensed Varick and he and 30 others uh, decided to withdraw from the John Street Emmy Church. In 1790, Varick married Aurelia Jones. They had seven children together, only four of which reached adulthood. In 1800, Varick and those who succeeded from the John Street M.E. Church established their own place of worship, and they called it the Zion Church. It was only a few blocks from Wall Street. In 1806, Varick and three other men became the first ordained black deacons in New York. In 1818, Varick helped to found the African American Episcopal Church, the AME Church, in New Haven, Connecticut. Varick was also the vice president of the New York African Bible Society. Varick was a strong opponent of slavery and openly supported abolition. He often preached sermons on the subject and fought for the civil rights of African Americans. In 1827, Varick and some of the other leaders from the New York City area petitioned the New York State Constitutional Convention to ask them to grant blacks to be able to vote. Six years later, Varick established the first black newspaper in the United States called Freedom's Journal. In 1821, Varick led a movement to establish a new denomination the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. Varick wanted to make sure uh, that there was a distinction between AME and AME Zion. Varick and Richard Allen did not see eye to eye on several things. Varick was then uh, elected the church's first bishop. And at the General Conference in 1824, he was elected a second time. On July 4th, 1827, Varick and his congregation were celebrating the fact that New York finally had enacted the final emancipation process for freeing Negro slaves. Two weeks after that, Varick passed away at his home in New York City. The first denominational hymn book was published in 1839 in New York, and it was compiled by Reverend Christopher Rush, Reverend Joseph Thompson, and Reverend Samuel Giles. The successor to the 1839 hymn book uh, was actually just um, a larger edition of the 1839 hymnal. The 1858 hymnal was adopted by the church at the General Conference of 1860. And just like the CME and the AMEs, the AME Zion uh, Church's 1839 and 1858 hymn books were abridged editions 
of the M.E. Church's 1831 hymn book. The hymn book uh, possessed 596 hymns, most of which were Wesley hymns. Here is a point that I found very interesting about the compilers of the 1839 and the 1858 hymn books. Christopher Rush, one of the compilers, was born into slavery. He was one of the church's first pastors and the second bishop. He was an anti-slave activist. Joseph Thompson was also born a slave in Virginia. Um, in fact, he helped to run the Underground Railroad and was also an anti-slave activist. Samuel Giles was an ardent abolitionist. Yet the hymn book that they compiled did not reflect at all their stance on Jim Crow. Another interesting thing is that though they compiled the hymn book, they did not write the preface to the hymn book. The preface was written by the then superintendent of the church. You know, the AME Zion Church was a northern denomination. And as they began to place churches in the south, they felt the need to instruct southern AME Zion churches as to how to worship the AME Zion way and uh, the singing of the AME Zions in particular, that they felt that they had to uh, talk to those at the southern churches about. Here is how the preface, a part of what the preface read. It says, in submitting this to you, we would recommend the laity to be more prudent in their social prayer meetings and similar exercises by avoiding the irregularity in the singing which destroys the harmony that should exist in this part of divine worship. We are commanded to sing in the spirit and with the understanding. By strictly observing this precept, we cannot but be blessed under its influence. Now, the irregularities in the singing that they are referring to uh, is they are saying, do not embellish, do not improvise on the melody line. It would be too much like slave singing. You know, Bishop Daniel Payne of the AME Church called it fist and heel religion. You know, the Amy Zion Church had a kind of difficult time breaking away from the Emmy Church. Uh, the Amy Zion Church was still in its infancy and had not yet uh, carved out its own identity. So they maintained and wanted to really be a part of the Emmy Church's conference. So in 18. 68, the General Conference of the Emmy Church, the AME Zion Church sent the Bishop Singleton Jones to speak at their conference. And this is what Jones said. I have been instructed by the General Conference of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church in America to say that the Emmy Church is still regarded the mother of our organization and that as we were induced to leave her simply because she made a distinction among her children which seriously affected our interests, we are ready to return. If we can be assured that no invidious distinction will be made in regard to us. Well, the Emmy Church did not adhere to their request. But the AME Zion Church continued to model its hymn book after the Methodist Episcopal Church's hymn books. Did you know 